we're going to cover the accounting technician of Ireland year one May 2017 paper and the question within that paper we're going to cover is question number one the question will deal with a commencement and an employment um, for October 2016. What we are going to be required to do is to work out the individual, the employee's take home pay. He's going to be taxed under Schedule E um, as an employee. So what we need to do in today's class is we need to work out an individual's take home pay from his employment. So, reading the question, Fred commenced employment with Jones LTD in, in January 14 and he was paid an annual salary of 36000 He is 45 years of age and he pays €250 Euro per month into a pension scheme, which is deducted from his salary. Fred is provided with a company car by his employer, we, so we have the potential of a BIK here. The original market value of the car is 27,000. Remember, for the purposes of BIK, we will always use the original market value, regardless of the actual cash price or today's value of the car. For 2016, during the year, Fred traveled a total of 42,000 kilometers, of which 25,000 were business kilometers. So in, in our rates and tables, when we're working out our, per, our percentage of the benefit of the OMV, the original market value, we are going to take the figure of 25,000 kilometers. He's taxed on an accumulative basis and his tax deduction card or his standard rate cutoff point, his monthly credits and normal USC and PRSI will apply. So remember what we're doing, we're doing an income tax computation. So that will involve me putting in the Fred's income and taxing it. So we'll make a start. So Schedule E, his tax, his employment income is going to be 36,000. That is his gross annual salary. Next, what we need to do is we need to calculate if there's any benefits, so benefit in kind. And I know that there's going to be a benefit in relation to his company car. So that's our first calculation or our first working. So it's BIK on the company car. So I need to know his business kilometers, which represented 25,000 in the question. And I also I need to know the OMV of the car. The original market value of the car was 27,000 euro. And I need to know at what rate, what rate will I apply to the OMV to give Fred his annual benefit. So Fred has driven 25,000 kilometers. So the rates and tables given to you in your exam will be as follows. So he's falling in between the area, the business kilometers, the annual business kilometers between 24 and 32. That represents an OMV of 24%. So he'll be charged an annual benefit of 24% at a rate of 24% of the 27,000. So the actual BIK in monetary terms or in money is going to be 6,480. And that's going to go in a Schedule E BIK company car. So Schedule E BIK car. And the amount was 6,480 euro. The next item that we need to look at is the pension that he's paying. So what he is paying is he's paying 250 euro per month. So his pension is 250 euro per month. And there are 12 months in the year. So his annual, his annual pension contribution is going to be 3,000 euro. And we need to ask ourselves, is he allowed full tax relief on that full 3,000 euro? Well, what we need to look at is we need to look at his age of 45 years and we need to look at his, his annual salary. So if I take that his age is 45, he can contribute, again, given to you in the rates and tables, he can get tax relief of 
25 of up to 25 percent of his earnings into into his pension fund so what he, he earned 36,000 he can contribute or get relief of up to 25 percent so that means that he's allowed at least 9,000 of contributions he is only contributed three that means he is entitled to a deduction for the full 3,000 euro that's going to reduce his PAYE it will however not to be deducted in terms of calculating PRSI or USC which is something that we're going to look at later okay so what we have done is we've worked out his annual income we've worked out his annual BIK and we've worked out his annual pension deductions in our question what we're asked to do is to calculate Fred's take-home pay for one month being October 2016 so my annual figures are 36,000 I'll simply divide that by 12 because I'm going to assume that all income and expenses are accrued evenly so what I have for his gross pay for the month of October is 3,290 euro and we are going to apply taxation to that figure so we're going to tax it and the amount that he earns or is taxed at 20% is 2816 2816.67 and I'm going to tax that at 20% which will give me 563 and the balance so 3290 minus 2816 is equal to 474 so the balance of 474 is going to be at the higher rate of 40 percent so my tax on that figure amounts to 18960 so when i add them two figures up i've got paye of 753 i'm going to then look at his tax credits i I haven't been told whether they're, they're refundable or non-refundable but I'm going to assume that they're non-refundable they're more than likely if I was to take it for a year they're more than likely my 1650 PAYE and 1650 um, single person so I don't need to do it for the year I just need to do it for the month I just need to take away 275 euro of my tax credits as given to me in the question I will leave the refundable there just for just for completeness so on that basis my PAYE due was 753 minus my 275 of my credit I have to pay or deduct 753 sorry I have to deduct 478 euro and that's PAYE due in terms of PRSI, the rate of PRSI is going to be 4% and it's going to be 4% but I am not going to allow be allowed the deduction for the pension. Remember, for a pension you can only get tax relief from income tax or for P or, um, and PAYE. You cannot get relief from USC or from PRSI. So your PRSI figure is going to be, I'm going to take 3000 plus my 540 is 3540 and I'm going to tax that at 4% and I might just make a note of it over here just to show the examiner where I'm getting my details so it's 3540 and it is going to be at a rate of 20% finally my USC and what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the 2019 rates, which are the rates that you guys will be using in your 2020 exams. So, I, and I will break this on the year. So if I get the rates and tables given to me in the exam, the first 12.012 is going to be at half a percent. So, 
12.012 was going to be at half of half of percent. So I'm just going to put over, uh, that over here. And remember from multiplying it is 0 0.005. The next 7, 7, 8, 6, 2 is going to be at a rate of 2%. And the the balance of up to up to, of up to seventy thousand ish is going to be at a rate of four and a half percent. So I know that Fred has only earned around thirty six, thirty seven thousand. So it's not going to go as high. So and remember that these are annual rates. So I need to g again get the monthly rate. So it's going to be twelve. It's going to be twelve oh one two divided by 12 months and the next 7862 divided by 12 is going to be 655 and the balance of my income is going to be taxed at four and a half percent so multiply that by 0 0.005 that's going to be multiplied by two percent and the remainder income 3540 so 3540 minus the thousand and one Minus the 655, I've got a balance of 1884. If I add them up, I get my 3540. So it's 1884 at 4.5%. So my total US, and then this will give me my net pay. So again, my pay was I earned 2750. Remember, I do not include this notional BIK. This isn't net pay. This isn't pay. I will take off my PAYE due. I'll take off my PRSI due, and I'll take off my USC, which was working number three. So my net pay, as per question, was 2028 for the month of October. I'm just comparing my solution to the, to the recommended solution. Um, and what we see is we see my salary, my BIK, less my pension gives me taxable pay of 3290, which is what my 3290 represents over here. I am then taxing it at 20% and 40%, giving me tax of 752 or 753. And I've just rounded it up to the nearest decimal place. In the exam, you should go to two decimal places take off my tax credits as, as, as provided in the exam um, and I get PAYE due of, of 478 or 477. I will tax my PRSI, again show me my workings, it's 142 or 141 and then I apply my, my, my three different rates of my USC. You will note in the USC that the rates are slightly different in terms of it was 1% now it's half of half of percent it was three percent it's now two and so on there was just a different requirement in finance act 16 and tables will be updated each year to represent the most recent finance act for your exam so i just wanted to give some clarity um, and show you in terms of how how the calculations are actually going to work okay it's again if you have any queries or any comments or concerns in relation to this content or to this question or indeed any other question please feel free to